Okay, so 3.8, final lecture of this part, and I want to talk about compare correspondence, sorry, correspondence. Correspondence theorem. So that's a result which is actually quite beautiful if you think about it. So usually when you encounter it in Facebook, in Wikipedia or somewhere um, in a textbook, it might look a little bit complicated. So let me try to explain the main idea. So let's suppose you have a group G. It's a group and N is a normal subgroup. subgroup. So then you can draw this poset of subgroups and you have G, you have identity, the smallest subgroup, the biggest one, and you have N somewhere in between. And then there are basically um, three regions of this diagram. So there are the subgroups between N and E. So some elements which are kind of here. So then there are some subgroups which are between G and N. So bigger than N, less than G. And they are somewhere, let me draw it kind of here. So maybe lots of them, who knows what. And finally, there are of course lots of subgroups maybe which are not in either of this uh, uh, regions. So suppose I want to understand what subgroups here look like. So they are subgroups of N. So these guys are of course in uh, bijection with just subgroups of N. And this is not surprising. They are after all subgroups of N and any subgroup of N will also be a subgroup of G. So that's why understanding subgroups of G containing inside N is really easy. These are just subgroups of N. And of course you don't need N to be normal here. But the question is what about this part? And the statement is that actually here there is also a bijection. But in this case it's a bijection with subgroups, subgroups of of factor G over N. So you can basically factor your group by N and the whole diagram of subgroups will be shrinked. So you forget about this part, which is not surprising. Everything inside N goes to zero, sorry, identity. And you can forget about everything which is not containing N, it also goes to identity. This part stays fixed. So the diagram will just go. So if you want to study subgroups of G containing a normal subgroup, that's the same as studying subgroups of G factored over N. And, and I think this is a really, really interesting result. And um, again, we'll see a lot of applications later on. And now I'm using it uh, in part because we'll indeed need it, but also because it's just an excuse to give you more examples of this kind of general algebraic ideas. So let me explain, uh, maybe uh, let me state the theorem. So theorem is as follows. So it pretty, has pretty long formulation and then I will prove it here. The proof is more or less trivial. So suppose you have G, the group, and N is a normal subgroup inside G. And then we have this projection, G mapped surjectively using a map P to G factored over N. This is what we discussed in this quotient group construction, which I called factor group because I'm taught in Russia and, and we called it factor group, but I think in English people usually use quotient group. Okay, and then the statement is, so there is a set of subgroups, so there exists exists a bijection uh, between uh, and then there are two sets. On one hand side you have subgroups of G containing N and there is a bijection and on the other hand, I have 
subgroups of G factored over N. Okay, so let me call this bijection uh, uh, Shall I use? Yeah, I don't know. F. So, okay, so this will be a map in this direction. So the question is, what is F? So in reality, that's pretty simple. So uh, F of H, if you have a subgroup here, where you send it, you just take P and look at the image. P of H, which is of course just sort of set of, uh, sorry, set of all element elements P of H for H in H, just usual set theoretic image. And if you want to take F inverse, so let me call this as F, this will be G, this G, the inverse one, which is F inverse, and G of um, okay, subgroup here will be denoted by, mm, let's say, uh, uh, H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G of I will be P inverse of I. So this is, of course, a set of all elements uh, G in the group such that P of G is inside I. So that's what the maps look like. You take subgroup, you send it to its image. So you have subgroup here, you send it to, you apply P to all its elements, you get subgroup here. You take a subgroup here, you take pre-image, you take all elements coming uh, from G which go there. So basically take union of all cosets of all elements which uh, correspond to this subgroup elements, and you take the pre-image. So then this bijection has properties. So also, uh, uh, so what is true? Okay, so normal subgroups correspond to normal subgroups. Um, this is one quantity. The other quantity is that the orientation is this bijection bijection preserves order. So after all, we have partially ordered set, partially ordered set, and the statement is that one is bigger than the other, and then the same is true for for the uh, post set of subgroups here. And um, I mean, this is just because in sets here, if you take kind of image of, of sets under surjective map, it will be true. Pre-image under any map will be true. That's pretty obvious. So finally, the last property is that uh, bijection preserves index. So if you have here some line with index, I don't know, 3, it will go to the corresponding line here, and the index will be the same, 3. So it preserves index. Um, and actually, if you have a normal sum group somewhere here, and you factor, the factors will be isomorphic, but let me skip that for now. Maybe we'll see that later on. Okay, so this is what's called correspondence theorem. Uh, so let me. So it's very simple. As all such abstract theorems in algebra, if you know the statement, if you know what you actually need, like normal sum group here, nothing else basically. You know what maps to look at. Checking it is trivial. But still, let me do it. Main case here to remember and to worry about is like whether these things are actually subgroups because a priori. You know, who knows? You take pre-image, is it a subgroup? You take image, is it a subgroup? That's kind of something to check. Okay, so let's start proving it. So we have the surjective map, G goes to G factored over N, and you have here the subgroup of G containing N. So first statement is that P of H uh, is a subgroup of G factored over N. 
Okay, let's tweak two elements there. So it is called P of H, and so it contains all elements which are in the image of H. So uh, let's suppose that you take two elements. So you have P of H1, uh, P of H2, are two elements inside P of H, where H1, H2 are in H. So then you can multiply them, and of course their product is just this. Um, okay, that was simple. Um, so next, um, yeah, and of course all other axioms, I mean, identity is there, and the reason why identity is there is because P of identity is identity, so that's why it's P of H, so identity is inside P of H. And so, so P of H is a subgroup. Okay, so uh, what does it look like, by the way? So you have H and it contains N. So if you draw your picture, you have, you know, G, then you have this normal subgroup N, and then you have some bigger subgroup H. And then it's really easy to see that if uh, H contains some element G, it contains the whole coset GN, because, I mean, it contains N and it is a subgroup. So basically, H is a union of cosets. And P of H will be just a group where elements correspond to this cosets. That's basically the idea. Okay, so then this is kind of first part. So second part is that if you take a subgroup I is a subgroup inside uh, G factored over N, then you can take P inverse of I. So this is definitely some subset, and this is a certain, so basically this is union of cosets uh, uh, which are uh, uh, in I. So, so I remind you that elements of factor groups actually label cosets, and I are certain cosets, and you take union of cosets as subsets of G. So why it is a subgroup? I mean, imagine you have two elements there, G1, G2. So then you know that P of G1 uh, is inside uh, I, you know that P of G2 is inside I, and then certainly P of the product is inside I. So that's fairly simple. Okay, next I need to prove that these bijections are order, uh, so th that these bijections are mutually inverse. And that's slightly less trivial, so let me erase again this part and, and I will finish this proof. Okay, so I remind you that P, this map from G to G factored over N, is surjective. But then there is this just set theory fact. So if you take I, a subset of the image, so you can take P inverse of I, that's a preimage of a set, and then you can take P of P inverse of I, and this is just I. So basically, you take all elements which go to I, and then you take their image, you will get I, and the reason why you get I is because the map is surjective. So there, there is no element in I which basically doesn't have a preimage, and, and, and so uh, this is kind of obvious from surjectivity of a map. Mm, but the other property is slightly less trivial, so if you take P inverse of P of H, and we want to understand why this is actually the same as H. And of course, uh, the problem is that if you have, you know, set, which is in this case maybe G, and then you have this H, and then you have this G over N, so you send H somewhere, and uh, uh, you get uh, its image, P of H, but who knows, maybe some elements outside of H also go there. You will take preimage, you will get something bigger. So a priori, it definitely contains H, but it might not equal to H. And so this is kind of a tricky part. Also notice we have not yet used that the subgroup actually contains N. Because uh, uh, so far, I mean, you can still take the image of a subgroup, it will be a subgroup here. You can take preimage, it will be a subgroup here. 
the statement is just set theory. So I have not used that exactly. So now I'm going to use it. And the reason is actually uh, 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 quite simple. So why this cannot happen? So uh, uh, just because if you have H and you have N, then you can just compute pre-image. So image of H will be a set of cosets which in union give H. Pre-image will return you H. So let me just write it down. So H is equal to the union. And actually, this is a disjoint union. There is a usual notation for it. If you have a collection of sets which don't intersect, pairwise, you can say disjoint union of cosets. Uh, H times N for H inside H. So, of course, you don't take all of them because some of them will repeat, but after all, you will get a disjoint union of cosets. And um, so then, uh, basically, you can easily understand that uh, P of H just consists of images of these elements corresponding to cosets, and pre-image will return you back H. So let me maybe uh, prove it slightly more carefully. So let's suppose I, so I want to prove the other inclusion. Let's suppose that I have some element G inside P inverse of P of H. And what it means, it means P of G equals to P of H. Okay, and what that means? It means that uh, P, uh, so there exists some element H in H with a property that P of G equals to P of H. But that, of course, implies that P of G H inverse is identity. So this is a time when we use that, that uh, we, have, we are working with groups, G H inverse is inside N. And uh, 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 now we know that actually N is inside H. And so we get that G H inverse is inside H, thus G is inside H. You multiply by this H on the right. So this part actually used the fact that we are working with groups and that uh, uh, our subgroup contains n. Everything else here is pretty general. So um, I recommend you to uh, check on your own that, so bijection preserves order, that's again a statement from set theory, that's very simple. Uh, the fact that index is preserved, it's slightly maybe more interesting statement. Uh, I'm not going to discuss it right now, maybe later, but again, you can practice with it. And definitely check that normal subgroups correspond to normal subgroups. So normal subgroup here, pre-image is a normal subgroup. Normal subgroup here, image is a normal subgroup. So basically, all this key information can be passed between G of N and G easily.